Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we have a quite special laptop in a box that is ready to be unboxed. And it is in fact Apple's last and best iBook. Back here we have uh, an example from each previous iBook generation. We've got a clamshell here, we've got a Blueberry 300 megahertz, and then we've got a G3 Snow here, a uh, 500 megahertz. And uh, they're great laptops, and there's only one left in the set of three that I needed to collect to complete my set of iBooks. So today we have that iBook, and it's of course an iBook G4, and it's in this big box. Check this guy out. Of course, I've hidden all the personal stuff and crap here. So, what do we have here? Well, what we have here, this is what I do know, and this is what I don't. So what I do know first is that this is a 1.42 gigahertz, 14 inch iBook G4. Uh, I know that it's in fair condition with some dents and scratches. Although I don't know how a plastic laptop can be dented. So we'll have to see what they mean by that. Uh, I know it has a sticker on the top. Likely because it came from a school, especially since the seller was selling multiple of them. It cost me like 70, over $70, which is kind of annoying for a fair condition laptop. But it's a vintage one, and it's the best one they made, so I figured it would be worth it to have one. And I know it's got OS X Leopard pre-installed. Which is nice, because I don't have a PowerPC Mac running Leopard. I have a couple running Tiger, but none running Leopard. This guy's running Tiger. That one's running Jaguar, I have another clamshell running OS 9, I have an eMac running Tiger, and then I have a dead Power Mac G5 that also ran Tiger. So I've never had Leopard on a PowerPC Mac before. In fact, I've never really used Leopard a ton either. I installed it once on a 2008 MacBook Pro, but I, I never kept it or used it much. So that'll be interesting. We'll also get that Leopard welcome video. Also, I've upgraded from the stupid kid's safety scissors that I used in my... Uh, Samsung Galaxy S unboxing to these actual scissors So we can go ahead and cut into the box. Looks like that's already come undone Also, it has been pre-sanitized due to COVID-19. It's been bleached so There shouldn't be any germs on there. Oh They really use some tough tape for this get this other side. Come on. All right. Where is it still? Ah. I also know it has 512 megs of RAM, which might be a little small for running uh, Leopard. Uh, so if I end up not liking Leopard, I can always just install Tiger. I have installed DVDs, official ones. But I think I'll keep it on Leopard and just upgrade the RAM. Also, that little mark right there is where a bit of the bleach actually ran into the box. So, oof. I think, at least. No. I don't know where that came from. It might have run in. Yeah, it looks like some liquid got into the box. Just a little bit, though. It should be fine. Especially since it's covered in all these layers of bubble wrap. Right away, we can see our slot-loading CD-ROM. Or actually, it should be a DVD. I don't know if it's DVD writer or not. By 2005, I would think it would be. Either way, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of DVD writing on one of these. So that shouldn't really matter. It also comes with a battery, but it said it may not hold a charge. I'm expecting it won't hold any charge. But hey, that's better than my G3 Snow, which you can actually see is missing its battery. It's very clear when one of those guys is missing their batteries, because it's actually part of the outside appearance. Put me in. Already seeing some of that scuffing, which uh, isn't going to be very visible. Let's take a look at the ports looks identical to my G3 Snow. Or, I mean, to my, yeah, to my G3 Snow. No change there at all. I think this these have been upgraded to USB 2 ports, though. And my G3 Snow is only a 12-inch, so... 
Oh, look at that stick. Oh, that's a painful sticker. Oh, how am I gonna get That's gonna take me ages to get off. I don't know what school that that is. Probably somewhere in California because that's where they shipped from. Ooh, that's gonna be a real pain to get off. And as you can see, someone's already tried and scraped it up. Ah, I might have to do some WD-40 on that. There's our battery. Hey, it at least holds a charge. That's nice. All right, so far I'm satisfied with the condition. All right, that's also a sticker. That might be permanent. The keyboard is a little bit stained. But overall, nothing I'm all too concerned about. Let's boot it up, since of course it has charge. Oh yeah, another thing I should test is I should make sure my G3 Snow's charger works on this guy. It should, it looks like the right fit. I'll also see real quick, can I see if this has an airport card? All right, yeah, I'm not gonna deal with getting in there. Definitely needs a good cleaning and that sticker removal. Ugh, that's gonna be such a pain. It might not be, I'll have to see. I'll definitely remove it during the video. Also worth noting is it has both of its little thingies here, its rubber things there. They're not broken off. My G3 Snows they are and it looks kind of ugly. Charger fits. All right, we got our boot chime. It's, defi it's definitely weird seeing an iBook that's so big like this. Again, I have the 12 inch G3 Snow. Different keyboard as well, not translucent. Dim display. These old backlights always need a minute to light up. I will say though, the sticker in the photos was definitely a different sticker than that. You see how thick that sticker is. It's, it was a very thin sticker in the photos, but it was a listing for multiple iBooks. I'll have to get that off. Looks like it's made to chip off. Definitely an anti-theft measure, which is annoying for me. All right, just not a scratch. Nope, it's a hair. Wait, this is Tiger. They said it had leopard on it. Whatever. Can't really complain about it too much. So it has tiger, not leopard. So the seller got that wrong, but again, I can't really complain that much. I can always install it myself. Plus, I'll probably run better on tiger with 512 megs of RAM. There we go, tiger. United States. Do not transfer information, US keyboard. Now I'm gonna set up the Wi-Fi. Good to see that it does at least have uh, an airport extreme card. I'm just gonna skip Apple ID. They really had Apple ID for a while. Uh, that's another reason I'm, I wish it ran Leopard. The stupid registration information that besides like the name, it literally does nothing. Like it's not, it's not used for anything. So I got to enter in a bunch of random crap. Uh, my first name is Electric. My last name is Outlet with random letters. I live on 123 Street Street, City, City. Uh, I live in Wyoming. Yeah, definitely don't live in Wyoming, but my zip code is 12345, and my phone number is 543-987-6543. That's not a real phone number. Don't try calling it. All right. Uh, home. Other. Don't keep me in touch with anything, even though it would literally have no way to do that. I want my accounts to just be electric. I'll enter in a password real quick. All right, uh, I put in my password hint as optional because it said the password hint was optional. 
I also put in my time zone, but I'm not going to show that. And it's the 7th of October 2020, and the time is... The time is 3.58 p.m. Continue. Even though I know the battery in here won't be working for long, I do want to check its cycle count and see how healthy it is. Because if I get a good battery out of this, that's nice. Either way, though, it's probably just going to randomly die one day. All right. We have... Here we go. I'm assuming this is on 10.4.0. 60 gig hard drive. That is plenty for an old Mac like this. Oh, 10.4.11. Nice. Built in. Built in. Wow. This has RAM soldered to the board. So that means I could just find a one gig module and put it in here. And I'd have one, of a, one and a half gigs. I didn't know that. Also, it's good to see that this is indeed a 1.42 gigahertz one. At least they got that right, even if they didn't get the operating system right. Uh, nothing about battery health in the battery, but it is fully charged. I'm also going to rename the hard drive to iBook G4. It's already pulling up software updates. Quit. <laughs> I don't want that right now. Good to see that their servers are still online, though. I, I, iBook G4 HD. Why didn't I just name it iBook HD? Because it says right here, G4 on the text. So I put G4 on the hard drive name as well. A couple other basic setup things that I would like to do. Are to set magnification on, on the dock, of course. And make the size quite a bit smaller than it currently is. I also want to see what resolution this display is. 1024 by 768. Still. I honestly expected a bit more. That iBook has 1024 by 768 and it has a smaller screen. Whatever. That's not the fault of the seller. That's the fault of Apple. So. It's crazy how just in like three years later we had just so many insane resolutions in the home laptops. Wow how that has evolved. So now let's see what we can do about getting that sticker off. Also, this laptop succeeds the MacBook test, sort of. I call this the MacBook test. I believe other people do as well. The MacBook test is basically, if you open up the laptop with just one hand, does it open up the display or does it lift up the entire computer? If it lifts up the entire computer, then it fails. And since this, and it's called the MacBook test because Apple's laptops have always historically succeeded. I have an idea on how we can get this stupid sticker off. <laughs> Man, anti-theft measures from schools. Property of M-I-S-A-C. Not anymore. They got rid of their laptops. Uh, it's crazy to see how in just 15 years we've gone from people getting actual, actual good Macs to just the school giving out the cheapest possible Chromebooks. Which is kind of sad to see. Wow. That's a real tough sticker. Oh, got under. I'm gonna have to use hot air. I'm gonna have to get a hair dryer or something to do this. That might work. But one thing I will try is WD-40 because WD-40 is awesome. And I think that that might be able to work. But I gotta move to a different surface because this very nice wooden table here would not take too kindly to WD-40. So let's do that. All right, WD-40. This stuff's great for lubrication and it's also great for sticker removal. The bad downside of it is it sprays literally everywhere. Now I have my doubts on how on how much good that this is gonna do, seeing as this is a metal sticker. I might just have to end up using a hair dryer, but I at least wanna try it first. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that for a couple minutes, maybe about five to 10, and then I'll be back and try to pry it off again. Any luck with this big old sticker? Yeah, definitely gonna have to get out the hair dryer. I might be able to chip off another bit of it though. Yay, sort of. The thing is, whenever I use WD, everything gets covered with it. My hands, my tools, my
my table like it really sucks. All right, got all right, got paper towels. Let's clean this guy up. Because yeah, I'm not gonna subject one of my microfiber cloths to WD-40. The smell like never comes out. thing is, it's so greasy still. That's why I hate using WD-40. Alright, got lens cleaner, hopefully. <laughs> All that I have is lens cleaner. I don't have isopropyl alcohol. I don't have anything else. Just a giant thing of lens cleaner. For the time being, anyways. So hopefully this... We'll be able to get some of that greasy WD-40 oil off. Better. It'll come off eventually. This is why I hate using it. I don't even know why I tried it. I mean, duh, of course the stupid sticker is going to require some heat. But that's how you get these things off. They have to have a way to come off at some point. I would have hated it if I had a sleek new iBook as my school laptop. And then there was just this big sticker that was PROPERTY OF MTSAC on it. Like, that would annoy me to no end. And again, the whole cover of our school Chromebooks have our school's logo printed over them. So... At least it's not a stupid sticker. I mean, come on. This is like doomed to scratch anything it comes into contact with. You put it in your bag, scrape. Oh, whose idea was that? Hey, but it seems to have worked. I mean, this iBook wasn't stolen. At least, it doesn't seem like this one was stolen. <laughs> it's probably just thrown away after 15 years. It's probably been like at least 10 since this thing was last used as a school laptop. And it never will be again. I mean, I might use it, like, once to type a document, just for fun, but... <laughs> it's gonna have a nice retired life now, where it'll be used for old software and stuff. Microsoft Office, maybe some old games. Alright, that's sufficiently non-greasy now. So, yeah, I'll apply some heat with a hair dryer, because I don't have a heat gun, and then I'll get back to you on all that. So, it's been quite a few months since I've recorded the last clip. Uh, so, perfect time to give an update and my thoughts on this before we end off the video. So, first of all, as you can clearly see, uh, the Mac is now running Leopard. I've turned off the 3D dock because it was really uh, laggy with this thing's graphics, but... The 2D dock works great. So uh, this is my go-to PowerPC Leopard machine now, and I love it. I haven't yet given it any upgrades. You can see it's just on 10.58, uh, 1.42 gigahertz, still has the 512 megabytes, but in Leopard, it's all corrupted. It doesn't say built-in like it did on Tiger. So uh, my dock gives a pretty good representation of what I use this for. Finder. All the default stuff. I have the PowerPC App Store, Leopard Web Kit, which is just here. Uh, so there's a Safari looking icon that's more useful than Safari. I still always use 104 Fox. I've got the updated iTunes. I've got iLife 05, iWork 05. Uh, I've got Coconut Battery, Time Machine, 104 Fox, 105 Tube, the PowerPC YouTube client. And it works great, and I do use it for, and I do use this Mac for watching YouTube when I just have it handy and too lazy to like go and grab my iPad or something. I have DOSBox. Uh, this is my most recent install. I can play Planet X3 on here as well as any other old DOS games I get, and it runs perfectly fine. I've got uh, Adobe Creative Suite 3 Design Premium Plus. I found After Effects and Lightroom One. Uh, I, I don't really know how to use a lot of these programs. I want to learn. They're just here because they look nice, and I like to screw around with filters and Photoshop and crap like that. And then I have Office 2008, 
So uh, that's just about all the applications I have. I have a couple other things in here, like Virtual PC I played around with, Tinker Tool. Uh, this was all just used to tweak Leopard to make it faster. Of course, I have Stuff It, ScreenFlow, which is a screen recording tool that works great. Uh, Minecraft G4. Yes, this thing can run Minecraft. It's not very well, but it is playable. And uh, what's interesting is it appeared to be a slightly customized install of Tiger, probably by the school that owned it last, honestly, because it had both Office 2008 and Super Duper uh, already pre-installed on it. So, great, I didn't have to install either of those myself, even though I don't even use Super Duper. However, the biggest surprise of all was, uh, well, no, nothing was broken on it. Headphone jack is a bit uh, finicky, I have to... Turn the balance all the way to the left or right to get normal sounding sound out of it. Uh, but the mainly surprising thing is the battery in it. Some people probably caught that earlier from the color difference, but I didn't at the time because I had never seen one of these before. But uh, this is a brand new replacement battery. Although seeing how quickly it degraded down to 89% health, uh, it probably wasn't very new at all. It had one charge cycle on it. Uh, so... Uh, it likely had never been used, but it was probably several years old at least because the seller said battery life is not guaranteed, so clearly he didn't know. And the price of buying a new battery for one of these is about the same I paid for the Mac, about $70. Still, uh, I'm really happy about this. You can see here my all of the million times I saved the data. It's all out of order for some reason, uh, but you can sort of see how the battery health went up and down. So it's gonna probably slowly go down, but it's still enough to bring this out into the field, of course. Not doing that much because of COVID, but uh, now cosmetically, the keyboard and whole computer cleaned up really nice. You can just barely see the marks that were there before. I'm actually taking this off the tripod so I can show you. It's pretty scratched up, but that isn't noticeable in most places, especially when the lid is open. Now what about that sticker? Still not gone. I got a lot of it off, but I'm stuck and it left this terrible residue behind. Uh, at some point, if I feel like it, I'm going to go ahead and use some heat and try to get it off. I tried with heat a little bit, but I had it off the hairdryer on low. I should turn it on high. but. Honestly, it's cosmetic only. I don't really care enough to do it. Fixing it properly would mean replacing at least that top cover, but I'd likely have to source a whole new display, which would uh, probably be easier. Uh, but overall, it's cosmetic only, and that's the main reason I feel like I overpaid a bit, but uh, it's a great base for laptop for whenever I want to up upgrade it. So, uh, I didn't find anything else wrong with it, and that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all next time.